Uh, some of you may have felt a earthquake today if you were anywhere in the tri-state area. So um, I'm going to get to that. I wanted to first talk about the geology of this area and just the topography. If look over here, pretty much we can see Appalachian Mountains out in Pennsylvania. Uh, New Jersey specifically, here I'll reduce the opacity so you guys can see this better. New Jersey specifically, it's a pretty flat state, especially down south and central. But um, towards the north, especially the northwest, you have mountains. If you look over here, you can kind of see this boundary of where the mountains are. And this one area of mountains is... Um, kind of extends out of that. So let's actually look at the geology itself of this area before anything. Um, let's look at the key real quick. So we can see any um, any igneous extrusive, which would mean volcanic activity is red. When you have extrusive igneous rock, igneous rock that is out on the surface came out there. And any metamorphic is dark blue. And so if we look, and then also any sedimentary is green. So we look towards the north of Jersey. We can see basically there's a lot of metamorphic, especially where the mountains are. And there's some igneous intrusive as well. We look at this area over here, look at this kind of chain just preceding those mountains. We can kind of see a chain of igneous extrusive rock, which is indicative of volcanic activity in the past. And actually look over here. These are the Wachuk Mountains over here in New Jersey. A very long time ago, these were actually ancient volcanoes. Uh, today, they're, they're far dormant because there's no tectonic plate activity here anymore. But there was tectonic activity here in this region once. There was a very long time ago. Don't remember the exact exact amount of years. But this area was tectonically active. So, and that's why we had a earthquake in White House Station, New Jersey today. 4.8 4 magnitude. The fault line lied around, along was the Ramapu Fault. So this isn't really known very well. It's an interplate fault, just like the New Madrid fault down in Missouri. Basically, the area of the earthquake was right around there, right around, right along the fault. So this fault line was the cause of that earthquake. There was some stress along that. If we want to pull up the moment tensor over here. We can see this is tension axis, uh, pressure axis. It's aligned uh, roughly like that, which is similar to the alignment of the fault in the area, just like that. And uh, this was more of a... Slight, slight, slight type of reverse faulting, not any strike slip. So there, there definitely was some solid movement of the of the ground, and um, I don't know how well this is gonna get across, but this is a seismograph of the thing from the nearest network in Texas. And if you want to hear this in an audio form, it's actually pretty cool. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear this. <laughs> that you can hear that deepening of the um, waves, which is when you have those real waves, the seismograph actually moving properly. So um, you might think like, hey, earthquake in New Jersey, pretty weird, right? So the cause of this already, as I told you, is that ramp who fault. There has not been a very strong earthquake in New Jersey for the past, I'd say, pretty long time, a couple of decades. Uh, the strongest recent earthquake I could find was a 2.7 magnitude in 2016. And pretty much besides that, in New Jersey itself, there have not been many very strong earthquakes in the past couple of decades. The strongest earthquake ever to hit the state itself was a 5.3 in 1783 in the state, north central New Jersey. And that was the strongest in the history of the state. This definitely gets up there with its 4.8 magnitude. And... Um, Looking at the earthquake itself, the earthquake itself was, I believe, this one right there. That's exactly where it was censored. Uh, there were no four shocks to this. And uh, this was felt pretty much a lot of places. Um, it was felt, I believe it was around 20 seconds in some areas, but I only felt it around 5 to 10. And uh, the shaking was pretty strong. It was shaking buildings, pretty large buildings as well. I was in a large building at the time of the earthquake. But there was not really much damage from this. Things didn't really fall over. Um, I did see reports of some damage to structures, mainly uh, decks and roofs when they're poorly constructed. I heard a report of a caved-in roof partially and a collapsed deck. But besides that, really not much damage from this earthquake. Many, many, many uh, aftershocks of two magnitude or less until this one around... Uh, 559 i think that is this one right here four magnitude aftershock 
the strongest of these. Uh, I did not feel the shaking of this, but I heard reports of shaking around the area. It was not as strong as the previous one. And also the shaking was only a couple of seconds long because the shake of an earthquake is determined by the movement of the earth from the earthquake itself. I'm going to pull up the moment tensor over here. Oh, they don't even have a moment tensor for this one. Yeah, so basically when the shaking is for less amount of time, that means the fault has moved much less. And that would be expected from an aftershock. From an aftershock, the fault would not move as much as it did within the main earthquake. So that's why it was a lot shorter if any of you were wondering that. And um, look at the, if we want to look at the aftershock forecast from the USGS, um, definitely they they were forecasting a magnitude three plus aftershock in the next week, and that did verify there was a magnitude four aftershock today, and um, yeah, we could expect a couple more aftershocks, probably a magnitude two, magnitude two within the next couple of days. That's my um, best best guess for this forecast, and I wanted to make something clear here. If we want, if we look at the Richter scale, right, the Richter scale, the scale on which we measure earthquakes, it's a logarithmic scale. So a the amplitude of a magnitude five earthquake compared to a magnitude three earthquake would be a hundred times greater. Every one step is 10 times increase in ampl amplitude. And if we wanna look at that in just terms of energy, it's 31.6 times greater. So then from a three to five, it would be around a thousand times more powerful, a five than a three. So really less than a three, you don't really feel. Three and greater is where you can start feeling it. Uh, four to five is that kind of sweet spot where you can viably feel the shaking, but damage doesn't occur. And greater than five is where damage does start to occur. So uh, it's it's pretty nice that this earthquake, it's like a lot of people, this might be the strongest earthquake they've ever experienced in their lifetime in this area. It was very good that there were very minimal damages with this earthquake. Any stronger and some damages may have occurred. But yeah, uh, definitely a pretty interesting thing. Uh, this ram who fault producing an earthquake hasn't really produced a strong one in quite a bit of time. But remember, you always got to watch these intra-fault, uh, intra-plate fault lines for earthquakes, just as the new Madrid fault line, ram who fault line in New Jersey as well. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for watching.